Hi everyone and welcome to Pro Tools Answers where three Pro Tools experts demonstrate and elaborate on your Pro Tools questions put to the community in Avid's official Facebook support forum. Please welcome uh, Master Instructor Mr. Anders Motz. Hello. And Uber Master Instructor Andy Hagerman. How are you doing? And myself, Dave. We take you into the inner workings of Pro Tools and Ethos, mainly to help the user community better understand the industry's app. In this episode, we're going to be... I do that all the time, in this question. In this episode, we're going to be looking at a question from Mark, and he asks this. Calling all Atmos nerds. Hi, Anders. <laughs> I have been told that the minimum Atmos requirements are 5.1.2, i.e. eight speakers. So if need be, one can use an Omni for monitoring and outputting these eight channels to speakers, question mark. Or would one be forced, forced Anders, to invest in a Matrix studio? I don't think there's any forcing involved. That's just a good decision, right? Uh, it's an excellent decision, <laughs> yeah. even if you're not mixing Atmos. So I've got a, a here's an interesting question for me. He, he's because obviously we're going to talk about seven point one point four in a bit being being Atmos. But he he asks minimum Atmos requirements being five point yeah, one. Yeah, and I had to tell you, Mark, uh, the the one who did the informing did did not inform you <laughs> right or correctly. Well, you know, so so let me let's let's break down this question. He says, if I use a 5.1.2, would an Omni work? The answer to that question yes. is yes. Yes, because it's eight right. outputs, eight speakers. It's eight, yep. it's eight outputs, mm. eight speakers. Mm -hmm. It is also true that one of the defining advantages of Dolby Atmos is that it makes the best of whatever speaker array that you have, right? Yeah. Now, that being said, if you're in a production environment, and I think this is where Andrews, you're going to go. If you're in a production environment and you have too few speakers and channels, you're not going to get a really representative, you know, panorama of of, of where your sounds are really actually coming from. Yeah. So, uh, so the minimum recommendation from Dolby is seven one four. So that means seven surround speakers, one LFE, and four overhead speakers. Channels. Yeah. Or speakers. Well, you could have multiple speakers assigned to a single channel. Yeah, okay, yeah, I get you. But but that would actually you would you wouldn't use it that way, right? Uh, if you if you had the advantage of, of nine, one, six, you would set yeah. that up as individual channels as well, uh, you, so you, that you, you could use them in array mode instead. Uh, that's that's what right. I do. Yeah. In in a studio, you don't generally need that, but in large theatrical environments, we often do do that. Yeah, yeah, there are there are often ways. So um, interesting, and 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 Anders, you brought this up earlier. Um, if the recommended minimum is seven point one point four, which it is, mm -hmm. why is the maximum channel width on on a new track? Why is that only seven point one point two? Yeah, you're making a, a great point here, and I I can show you exactly what what uh, Andy is talking about when you're creating a new track. Uh, your maximum channel width is 712 and that is something that we call a bed and an audio bed is basically based off of the fact that we don't know how many overhead speakers the the um, the listening environment has so uh, the beds or the overhead channels in beds are always used as an array or you have left side and right side and that's basically uh, it for, for overhead channels. But looking at the render, this is the Dolby Atmos render, you can see that this is the, uh, the default configuration of a listening environment. And here you can see that you've got the left, center, right, you've got the left and right surrounds, and you've got the left and right rear surrounds, and four overhead speakers. So when you're outputting something into a bed, the bed will use these two speakers as an array and these two speakers as an array. So for bed channels, there is no forwards and backwards. Uh, you only have left and right mm -hmm. side. Now, could you change that speaker array to be a 5.1.2? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. So, um, so this is the room setup of the render. And as you can see, this is the uh, this is the smaller version of, of, uh, of this, uh, uh, and uh, it allows you basically to have more speakers, as we have here, 
but you can also set up a solution where you have few, fewer speakers. Mm -hmm. So this would be my, my physical speaker setup. And in your case there where you had a 512, that might be your limitation of your audio hardware and also your speaker choice, right? Uh, so it's entirely possible to set up such a configuration. And this would be a 512 configuration. And you could use this, uh, but it's not a recommended um, thing. And of course, the render will simply adapt and play everything out, but you will have no forwards and backwards in the overheads. You will just have blobs of, of speakers. So if you need uh, uh, forwards and, and, and rears in your overheads, which you do, uh, to get the full experience, you need a 714 configuration. And it's a balance, right? So you know you could you could activate all the speakers that you, that you're seeing here, right? You could turn them all on if you had a room that had actually that kind of space that did that, and you would get more granularity and specificity with your panning, right? The more, the better, obviously, right? Yeah. Um, and if I had the mastering suite, which I've got on another computer, you could actually expand on this uh, as well mm -hmm. to add even more speakers. Yep, but. I mean, it's a balance of reason, right? So you know, you can go absolutely crazy, and if you've got the budget and space to do it, God bless, go forward. Yeah. But I don't think, and I think whoever gave him the advice on five point one, can you do five point one? Yes. Is yeah. is that a good idea? Probably not, because you're just going a little bit too far, and your 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 mm. your positional um, granularity is just not adequate to to a production environment, according to a lot of people and Dolby, right? Yeah. He could, uh, um, he could still bounce in it. He just wouldn't be able to monitor in it, right? Yeah, I, I mean, oh, sure. mm. what, what you can do is, even if you have fewer speakers in your setup, I would personally set up my room to be a 714 mm. room, and then I would set up a monitoring path that was the particular, and in this case, he was using a 512, right? So I'd probably create a monitoring path that would make use of mm -hmm. those speakers only. And, and now I can choose if I want to monitor the, the signal as I have my room set up like this, and it will play out using these speakers. Mm -hmm. But I can also switch over to the physical setup, and I could see at least visually how sounds are panned back and forth between the overheads and all of that. Yeah, so that's the advantage of setting up yeah. a physical setup larger than your actual setup. But I wouldn't recommend using this for at least for any critical work. Uh, if you're only pre-mixing, maybe you're doing sound design and, and things like that, maybe that's the perfect solution for you. Maybe mm -hmm. your room is, is very small. Go with it and, and go and do the mix in a 714 room. Well, I have a question, Anders, if you wouldn't mind, if you would indulge me for a second, because I like to think mm -hmm. of solutions when it's very easy to say to somebody, you, no, you need to go out and buy an interface with, with 12 outputs and you need to go and buy good speakers to be able mm -hmm. to do this thing properly. But if he's, if he's only got the resources to be able to get an Omni and he's only got the mm -hmm. resources to be able to get the, how many speakers were in that array? Was it eight? Eight. Eight, eight yeah. Um, and he's got the renderer and he's got headphones, he could set it up in 7.1.4 and monitor it in the room in 5.1.2. Yeah. Do, do you use some of the object panning for all of the, mm. like the extra speakers. He'd hear some of it, but not all of it. But he could also switch over to the binaural monitoring in the headphones to, and kind of use the room and the headphones as a bit of a like a test between two environments to get the best out of what he's got and then as you yeah. say go and test it in a larger environment to see if he's nailed it um could yeah yeah if, I if mean, that's uh, all you got would that be acceptable <clears throat> i mean using binaural audio uh is a fantastic way of of, of getting a rough estimate what it will sound like mm -hmm. and i actually even though i've got a 714 mm -hmm. setup mm -hmm. i constantly switch over to headphones to make sure that it sounds okay in binaural because mm. I know that a lot of people that would be listening to the end result will probably experience it in uh, in headphones. So that's why I'm switching over, but you're absolutely right. Uh, that's a great tool for you. I wouldn't rely 
on it 100 percent but it's one of the tools that you have we, we are and, only and, talking roughly because if you don't have the stuff what do you default back to you know mm. you, you make good of the resources that you have right that's that's all yeah, my but, angle is it's not saying you no sh- no you it's, should it's, go out it's, and buy it's all the stuff but it's an essentially important question is what are you trying to do and and for what you're trying to do what's mm. the minimum he says he says what's the minimum we're we're parroting the the dolby mixing mm. recommended minimum right mm. not parroting but that's that's what we're citing and i i'll stand by that mm. you know there's no mix that that i would feel comfortable going out the door to a customer that i'm not hearing that kind of specificity mm. but if he's if he's editing and he's going to be doing other things save save even more money just go binaural right you know if you're if you're not doing critical mixing mm-hmm. or or if mm-hmm. your your and i don't want to say if your standards are lower but if the 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 arena you're playing in doesn't require that kind of specificity then yeah you can save your money but you know i i think somebody's saying yeah all you need is 5.1.2 that's that, i don't think that's generally as accepted for for what Dolby's designed to do, which is you know theatrical yeah. releases and stuff. Yeah, ab- absolutely right, Andy. I I, I agree with you. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, some of the comments in this thread was uh, <laughs> they were, were great, great. Re- <laughs> recommending other interfaces and stuff like that. And I'd also like to remind you that you don't really need a, a monitoring. Uh, um, a monitor controller for 714. Uh, there is one built into the render that you can actually use the attenuation here and you've got the dims and mutes for different mm. things for beds and objects and in a pinch you could go with a couple of 192s and just output that at full code and use the attenuation from from the render uh, I mean because getting an interface with a proper monitor controller can be a costly thing and there was also mention of the Matrix Studio, which I love. It's a great interface, and it has Dolby Atmos monitor controllers as well. Yeah, and it's, you know, and it, somebody said, yeah, it's it's overpriced. Um, I, I'll challenge that. Um, the the clock on that is so great, and and the clock and the low jitter is more important the more channels you have. Right, because yeah. you, you know, you're dealing with a lot of sources that need to be really aligned and, and, and carefully controlled temporally. And I'll tell you that it's it's hard to beat the Matrix or the Matrix Studio, which which both have the same kind of guts. Well, the the, the comment was about price versus features, you know. And if <laughs> well, uh, it depends what kind of features you expect to see in any in any kind of interface, really. But I think right. Andy, your your feature you've you talked about quality. it a number of times is. <laughs> Is clock yeah, jitter but, but, the other one? Is is clarity? You want you want yeah. to hear exactly what's coming out of your door that's, without any coloration. That's that's the that's, that's the, I don't I don't even want to call that a feature. That's not a feature. <laughs> that's what that's central to what you want. Everything else is 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 secondary to me, right? For me, I've got the Matrix Studio, and uh, and, and I the test totally. Load. I totally agree with you, Andy, but, but it took me a while to figure out what the prog- product actually is. And it's, I, wouldn't, I don't even see it as an interface in that sense. A standard interface, you connect to your computer and, mm. and Pro Tools plays out of it and you can record through it, right? But mm. the Matrix and the Matrix Studio is more like a central piece in your studio. And Pro Tools is one of the things that the Matrix or Matrix Studio will connect to. Yeah. And you can have a multitude of other things that are connected to that central hub and it's just distributes it and it's just got a um, massive capabilities of, of of transferring signals in all directions in all different formats and it's it's so much more than an interface uh, uh, yeah let's not spend more time on that <laughs> <laughs> well um I, I get I get the sense because Mark's been a community member for a, for a long time. It, he, he seems to be one of the guys that's doing it right and doing it properly. So yeah. I think it would be in terms of what would the minimum requirements for for Mark's studio be if you're doing it properly, as you said, Matrix with the correct amount of speakers, the correct the correctly treated environment, um, doing it properly. Yeah. Mm. Okay, shall we put a pin in that there? Sure, I think so, yeah. Awesome stuff. Thank you very much to you guys. Uh, It's it's always an interesting discussion talking about Atmos 
and uh, I think more and pe- more and more people are going to be jumping on that in the next uh, year or so. So this uh, this will be really useful for everyone. Um, if you haven't yet done so, uh, if you could hit like on our video, that really helps our channel grow and and reach more Pro Tools users. Uh, if you could sub- subscribe to our channel as well, that would uh, that would help you and us. <laughs> um, and if you head over to ProToolsAnswers.com, you can subscribe over there and see what we're up to. You can also uh, subscribe to our inner circle if you fancy supporting what we do here uh, so we're, we're community funded um, so you can check out our inner circle and see what the tiers offer you uh, which includes master classes with uh, one up to the three of us <laughs> um, every month and uh, access to our uh, closed discord community and stuff so if you fancy helping support the show please do and uh, leaves me to say is thank you to Anders thank you and Dave. thank you to Andy you bet and thank you to me as well We'll see yes, you guys. There we go. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Uh, have a great week. Uh, my name's Dave. This is Pro Tools Answers, and we're out. <laughs>